And we are live, guys. Whoa, ladies, hello, hello. Ladies, gentlemen, Joe. How so, are we doing? We're here. I'm still recovering from that trip. Well, hey, you know, Will Smith has not smacked the shit out of me, so I'm having a good day. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, Joe, you're the one to decide to investigate all damn night and then do an eight-hour drive at three in the morning. Road warrior, <laughs> this guy. Paranormal road warrior, this guy. Forget that other guy that had that... Uh, yes. Had that name. This is the real paranormal road warrior. Where, where did you stop off and um, check your eyelids at? Uh, I was um, three hours uh, from home. I I, I was like, I, I got to sleep a little bit. Yeah. You know, I thought it was weird last week having everybody in the same building for the show. But now that we're all split up again, it's even weirder this week. So <laughs> I don't know what the happy medium to that is, but it feels awkward not having you guys like in the same building. Yeah, my yeah. home is a studio. That's all I can say. <laughs> but uh, well, I can hey, say it's nice to be back home in my own home office and own bed. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's a lot quieter in my house now that everyone's gone home. That is for sure. But well, minus least, minus the activity, it keeps at out, least but. from the human activity. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that later. But hey, we got a guest tonight, right? You yes, booked the guest, right, Joe? But no, you booked the guest. Oh, I booked the guest. All right, well, then I guess Anybody that's my job to that? introduce him. Anybody want to maybe take a wild guess where he might be known partially from? Oh, I don't know. Where, where would that be, Brian? Yeah, I don't know. Not sure. Anybody, anybody got any ideas? So Man. tonight's guest is was one of the, well, he's a paranormal investigator first. Let's get that out there. He was uh, one of the stars of one of the best all-time paranormal shows on TV, Ghost Hunters International. He is a filmmaker with his production company, Los Bastards. He uh, has one of the most wicked sense of humors of anyone I've ever met. He's got an amazing VHS collection, and he's someone I'm proud to call a brother. Ladies and gentlemen, from Ghost Hunters International and Los Bastard Productions, Mr. Scott Tepperman. All right. Oh, oh there he is. I didn't know who you were talking about. The guy sounded pretty cool. <laughs> well, you know, I was, was going to say Rob Demarest, but I don't think right. he's got as many VHSs as you do. <laughs> <laughs> that was one hell of an intro, though. Scotty, how you doing, brother? How you guys doing? Thanks good, for having man. me. Good. Absolutely. Thanks for the time. We really it's appreciate it. It's an honor it. to be here. Thank you. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Zach Bagans, what are your thoughts? <laughs> no, I'm wow. kidding. Only kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, straight to it. So, uh, so <laughs> you know, it, the only guy not on the panel tonight not wearing a Ghost Hunters International shirt is the guy that was on Ghost Hunters International. Yeah, I have a Sisters of Mercy shirt on. Okay, all right. No, that's a little bit of cred. We'll give you that. <laughs> so, uh, so I would imagine a lot of people recognize you still from Ghost Hunters International. Is that Fair to say? Um, it is. It's weird because, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when when the show started, and I used to, I wore the shorts all over the place. Shorts? Shirts, not shorts. We have you shorts? That would be a totally different show. Um, okay, all right. But I wore the shirts all over the place, and people were like, oh, I know the shirt. Where'd you get it? <laughs> and then it started being like, oh, <laughs> I know the shirt, and I think I saw you before. And then they started knowing my name, and then even now without the shirts, People know who I am, which is cool. But you know, I have the the film stuff going on too, and I'm I'm lucky enough to be kind of doing a balancing act between the two. So I am getting people noticing me from the indie film circuit, uh, still mostly for Ghost Hunters, but from the indie film circuit again. Um, so yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. I don't get like oh my god and stopped on the street, but uh, my my wife and I went to a, a restaurant get sandwiches um, for lunch, and um, they taken everyone's name down. And uh, they just wrote my name down, and I was like, you know, and they're like, oh yeah, we we're fans of you. We know who you are. I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> and then, fans and then, give me free food. <clears throat> right. <laughs> I, know, I know. And then we go to this Mexican restaurant all the time that we um, we we uh, we frequent this place, and we think they know us just because we're we're the regulars. But um, it was I think it was last week. One of the guys walks up to us. It's the owner's son, and he's like, so are ghosts real? And I'm like. What he's like? Yeah, we watch sci-fi every day here. We're all gathered around. I'm like, oh, he's like, we know exactly who you are. I said, I, I thought you guys knew who I was, but not just because I'm a regular, not like <laughs> related to anything. Sure. So it's kind of interesting. It, it happens on and off now. Yeah. Well, maybe you can clear this question up for me. Mm -hmm. So obviously, um, Ghost Hunters itself and reruns are on the Discovery family mm -hmm. of networks, right? Discovery Plus. But GHI's reruns are on Peacock. Right. Different distribution company, different production company. What's up with that? I just know Sci-Fi was owned by uh, NBC. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a no-brainer. 
Sure. Um, G G H I has always been the uh, the redheaded stepchild for some reason. Um, and and so by redheaded stepchild, you mean the best, right? Right. Well, you know, hey, some people <laughs> say that, some people don't. Okay. Um, I enjoyed but it's, it. It's, it's always guys. been it's always been held in such a high regard that show, even to this day. And sure. I think there was one of the reasons that there was there was so much crap that came out. Everything had to have a gimmick. Everything had to have a hook. The thing with GHI is the gimmick was there really was no gimmick. Um, the locations originally when a show started, the, I think the producer, I'm not going to speak for them, but it seemed like the producers thought that just going to all these locations would be cool. And, you know, early on in the show, they had a revolving cast of characters that would come onto the show. Even when I started watching it, because I wasn't on a show in the beginning, obviously, every week I was like, who the fuck, excuse me, but like, no, who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? You know, yeah. because, and you didn't really get overly invested in people because they were gone right away. Sometimes they mid-episode. Finally. They yes. finally realized that, um, I think it took them a little while, but maybe halfway through the run of the show, they actually realized that we all had our own fans. Like, I had my fans, Paul had his fans, for some reason, Paul had his friend. No, I like Paul. Um, <laughs> Paul had his fans. Susan, you know, Rob, Joe, they, they all had their fans. So they started realizing, hey, we got something here. It, it, it's it's twofold. It's the investigators as well as the show itself. And I think, you know, the fact that we never caught as much as everyone else did, and that may be one of the reasons we were uh, finally taken off the air. Uh, our ratings weren't bad, but, you know, we weren't the sensationalism was was uh tapped down a lot we were more procedural rather than uh uh you know flash and pizzazz that's just what we were so i think it like if you take ghost adventures and all that i mean you brought up zach baggins and all that but their show i never really liked their show at all obviously but they do what they do very well and they keep it fresh and they keep it entertaining i understand i totally understand the fans that they have, and it, it's deserved the show that they, the fans that they have. Our show is different than that. And it catered mostly to more uh, people that wanted to learn about the scientific aspect of stuff and more of the investigators. And unfortunately, right. that's a much smaller demographic. And I think as a result, there was less, I don't want to say marketability, but there was less, maybe less casual interest in the show. Um, and then when all these other shows, there was an influx of shows when ours was towards the end and i think it was just very easy to say let's try some of these other ones and and put that one to rest now is ghi going to come back i really don't know i you know ghost hunters came back everything could come back it's very possible that it does come back i think it's a good show and i don't think it ran its course fully so i i would expect it to come back in some fashion um i think it deserves to to come back i really do but we'll see. I mean, based off your description, then would you kind of say you guys were the ghost nerds? No, I don't even think we were at that point. We were just more, um, just more procedural, more procedure driven. I know. Um, I still like, binge it, watch it. Well, the, thank you. <laughs> You're the one. That's good. Yeah, I'm no. the one. No, <laughs> um, hey, I got the DVDs, man. Don't try me too, out. man. Absolutely. <laughs> but if, but if you look at the, um, I, I'm gonna butcher the name now, but the, the show, oh, trending fear, the show that Paul did. Um, he didn't. It was a six episode. Oh run. yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Um, with credit to Paul, which I don't give much, but he's a good guy. We just bust each other's chops. But he was able to be more in his element there. They sure. showed him, you know, the scientific, uh, the science behind everything what he was doing. Oh, we this and this is experienced, so we're gonna try to rig this up to have it do whatever. And that's cool. We did that for Ghost Hunters International too. But they never showed a lot of that. You know, unfortunately, it was start the show, get the case download in the car, get to the investigation, set up the equipment, have Barry and Chris do the first beat of investigation. What was that commercial? That's always how it went. And unfortunately, in my opinion, it seemed to miss some of the stuff in translation because getting to a location is half of the battle. Sure. You know, when you guys know, when you investigate, if you've had a really bad day, and you're drained and you're emotionally spent, usually you shouldn't investigate, but that's going to translate. That's going to transfer over to the energy in the investigation. Sure. If you have to trek through woods and put equipment in, in you know, waterproof bags and carry it behind you and get to a location, you're physically spent. You're out of your element. You're working against the, the odds. 
that should all play into the whole investigation. So again, another reason I'm not here to certainly tout Ghost Adventures. They don't need me to tout it, but you know, with with that show, with, with due respect to that show, if it takes them forty five minutes to explain the backstory of what's happening, they're going to show forty five minutes of them getting to the case and then investigating and then doing whatever, which is cool. The way the Ghost Hunters International was, it was very cookie cutter, uh, which isn't bad. I mean, pe- some people liked it very much. I liked it, but. It maybe it gets a little redundant when it's like everything is up. Oh, there's your two minute download. There's your two minute setup. There's your whatever. There's your this and that. I always felt like there was so much more to that that I wish they would have shown. And I think that may have resonated a little bit better with people um, looking for a little bit more sensationalism or a little more looking outside the box type of uh, stuff. You know, I, I really feel it hit its stride. You know, in the beginning, obviously, there were a lot of GH retreads on there, right? Right. And I think that was to get some name recognition and mm-hmm. start building the brand. But once those guys kind of moved on and, mm-hmm. and your crew came in, that's when I felt like it really hit its stride. You guys had amazing chemistry right? that you just don't see on hardly any of these damn shows anymore. Right. right. It's true. Well, the thing is, we really, um, we all stay in touch. I was talking to Barry the other day, I was messaging him, but you know, logistically is mainly the reason why we don't stay uh, more in contact than we can. It's hard when we're so far away. Or we're all busy with all different schedules. I saw Chris Williams at um, Scarefest. First of all, I always, I always loved her. She's great. But um, it was like no time has passed. I loved seeing her. It was great. Joe, he was my partner on the show, you know, but perfect. Paul, he and I are always going to be, you know, he and I think we're the closest in age, closest in personality, and we just have that, that connection. And when you, especially when you go overseas, it's different than some other shows that are local, because when you go overseas, your, your world becomes very, very small. You have like 15 or 20 cast uh, crew members with you. Plus the, I hate to say the cast because we, we weren't really scripted or acting, but you guys know what I'm saying. Sure. The investigators, um, it's pretty much the 20 of you, maybe one person that is our contact over in whatever country we're in. And that's it. So we really had each other's backs. We were looking out for each other mentally, physically. There were times where, you know, our camera guys were filming and I could tell that Joe was shaking up. I'm like, Joe, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, no, you're not fine. Can we stop the cameras? What's going on? Because he took a lot of motion on him. Um, Joe did the same with myself. Susan was like that. We just, you know, everyone experienced stuff. And then when you have that, aside from just going to all these countries and, and being on a television show, which obviously is going to be a, a highlight of your life you you don't forget that just because of the how how dependent you are on each other which is good and which is not but you're not really playing stuff off of the camera you're really looking out for each other and you're investigating and i think that came across well because it was it was that was genuine i really care about those guys um to this day i do and uh i think we had a great great camaraderie and it's just a great group Cat, oh. a crew also a crew is amazing um yeah and i enjoyed the show i really did um yeah it was sort of like a cut and paste from Mm -hmm. from ghost hunters um whatever but i still enjoyed that format anyways but it it certainly was that revolving door Mm -hmm. here's somebody now early on it was early on it was yeah and yeah and that was kind of like you know oh you know you you finally get it you know attached to somebody you know from that show they're gone Right, and you, that that takes away. Also, doing that, it really hurt. It can really hurt the dynamic of, mm-hmm. you know, everybody who works together and and the flow of the the investigation of the show. Well, it, it does because even when on a local level, when you investigate with people, you know that if you're working with so and so, you just know each other, and you just know the energy that you're bringing <laughs> to a particular location. By switching up teams, even if you had the six of us and we're interchanging us, which they did a, a couple of times, pretty much not really. But um, even when doing that, it messes up the normal flow of stuff. You have to find your rhythm. It's like if you're a if you're a quarterback and you're a receiver, Tim's going to like that, re- that reference because he always thinks that I don't know what I'm talking about. But you know, <laughs> if, if you switch out a receiver and a quarterback, it's going to take them for a while to get on the same page. Sure. It's the same exact thing with that stuff. You know, it just It just is. My only frustration was when people did leave, and this is a, a Hollywood in general, like mm-hmm. they never address it, right? Like when right. Brian left the original Ghost Hunters, they addressed it on camera or at least made mention of it. When he right. left your show, it's just, whoop, he's there one week, he's gone. Yeah, they, like here's I said, the, person. the beginning of the sh- 
show was cool, but it definitely was a revolving door for whatever yeah. reason. And I think, like I said, it took them a while, but they did realize that we all had following. So they started respecting the audience more in terms of that. Even if even if you have to, because usually for TV, you make up something and, oh, Brian had to go to the bathroom. And that's why he's not on when clearly maybe he was thrown off or something. I'm just making up, yeah, so I don't sure. know. Right. But, um, but it makes, it flows because you need to explain that away. And when you do sure. film, you kind of need to, if you have glasses on in one scene, the next scene you don't have one, you probably right. need to film a little something of you putting them down, even if you sure. use it or not, just to have that logical progression. Yeah. So yes, so, they didn't have that sometimes. I'm just going to tell people, Scott Tepperman said Brian had IBS and that's why he can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Actually, <laughs> you know what's, you know, what's funny. Um, a lot of people have, and, and people always have their, 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 you know, impersonate impersonations, their impressions of people and whatnot. Um, I'll never forget this though. And it, this is, you know, when you, when you have something going on, that's aside from, away from cameras and just its own thing. It means a lot to you because you know people aren't playing anything up years ago and i'm talking this is like shoot it's like 14 mm -hmm. years ago i was in my first paranormal team we did a local shitty convention there was there was like nobody there brian harnwatt was there he was on ghost hunters obviously at that time and i was uh, i hate to say the term because everybody is but this is how people view people but i was a little nothing my team was a nothing we were really whatever he couldn't have been any cooler. He was so nice, humble. When he did a lecture, he brought me out there. Um, he wanted to hear what I had to say. After the event ended, he's like, yeah, let's go. Let's go eat something. We can talk. We, we hung out for a while and talked. There were no cameras. It was he and I. The guy was genuine. Now, was he a good investigator on the show? I have no clue. I never worked with him on either shows. I don't know. Um, was all the drama manufactured or real? I heard that a lot of it could have been real, but I'm not privy to any of the information. I don't know. Sure. I can just honestly tell you the guy was sincere and nice. And he's apparently seems to have had some issues on Facebook and there's some crazy. When I met him, couldn't have been more a, a upstanding guy and humble down to earth and very in tune with what I had going on with, with uh, uh, starting out with stuff. And, sure. you know, you can't take that away from anybody. That's awesome. Well, it, so, it's funny you say that because mm -hmm. my first interaction with you was the same. I'm just Joe investigator. You've been on TV and you treated me, like just we'd known each other forever right like Thank once you, we established that bond so i mean you don't get that from everybody in hollywood and especially in this field i've come across a lot of people that have been on tv that some of them like you are very genuine and then some of them are dickheads so well it's sad because you know i yes i like the film stuff of course i always wanted to do horror films that's what mm -hmm. i wanted to do i was never a paranormal guy that decided to do horror i was always into horror somehow um the opportunity they were putting a casting call online for ghi and one of my friends applied me for it that i had no idea and i started rolling with it I ended up on the show i was happy because i hadn't been investigating i was like a lot of these people watching show maybe you guys too you're watching a show and you're like what the fuck is that guy on there for i'm much better than that i could do that or you know <laughs> what's wrong with me so i used to always do that so when i was able to get on the show <laughs> i when I was able to get on the show, I was proud of the fact that I could showcase my skills as an investigator and just get it, get myself out there for that stuff. That was cool. Uh, the show was a plus, and the show, the fact that they paid to fly you everywhere and did this and that. I don't, have, I don't come from money. I still don't have money. I would never be able to see these places, and it was yeah. cool. It, it made me um, grow as, a, as an adult. Because I didn't care. Like, I always quote Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> Remember him from the 90s? Yes. But, um, yes. 80s, 90s. but he's like, the whole world could sink as long as it's sunny in my backyard. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I felt. I didn't care about any other places. But going overseas, I, I learned and, and evolved and grew a lot. And it made me appreciate so much more. And um, it's sad that, you know, every investigation team out there has at least one or two people that... I think could be really sincere. Some of them try too hard. Some of them don't, but they're, they're all stuck in that, you know, I'm really good. I'm really, really good, but people don't want to have anything to do with us because we don't have a TV show. So it gives a false sense of um, elitism for people because to this day you have to have a show or you're, you're considered, Oh, but you don't have a show. You're not that kind of, you're not right. at that you're level, not an expert. which is not true at all. First of all, there's no experts, but right. you're not people look at you like that. And, 
you know, a lot of people want to just cruise on it. They want to go anywhere and just put up their hands and say, hey, I was on this and this show. Bow down to me. That's not how it works. You know, Some people even do the, my son was on the show. Oh, right. Gary. Right. My mom did say that once, yes. No, no, That's I'm cool. talking about a certain someone's father who does the circuit. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, nothing <laughs> frustrates me more than when I go to these ha haunted locations, <laughs> these these commercial ones. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you've seen the on TV investigators, 8 by 10s that have been there that are signed. And then there's a signature from someone's dad who was on two <laughs> episodes of a of show. And I'm like, and he's running events. And I'm like, wow, yeah. this is where the field has gone. And that's no dig at him directly. That's not a dig. Just in no. general, yeah. how this yeah. field goes. And it's a well, dig because it's not a dig because, yes, that shows the that kind of, and it shouldn't, but it kind of legitimizes them. You know, for myself, I don't think GHI should legitimize me, but I'm, I'm kind of glad that it didn't. I mean, even like you say, Gary, um, when we met, we were down to earth and we, we connected right away. I'm very humbled by everybody I meet says that everyone's like, Scott, you're, you're such a nice guy, or you're the, exactly the way that we thought you'd be, um, in person as, you know, I'm the same person on a show I'm, I'm whatever. Um, and that's just how I am. And it's kind of cool that people say that, but yet I understand that people kind of have to tout that, Hey, I was on whatever, because people don't listen otherwise. And now when I first started, it was, everyone had a, a podcast, uh, it was a blog talk radio. Everyone had a blog talk radio show. I did too at that time, but everyone had one. <laughs> then it was like, I got a book. Everyone had a book. Now it's like, I got a, no response, but I, I've got a podcast. video cast or a podcast. <laughs> right. But it's cool. But there's still some good ones out. There's just a lot right, of guys, good ones out Thanks for showing there. up. Thanks for right. watching. I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> but you, but you guys know what I'm saying. And it yeah, just absolutely. always seems to be like that. And now everyone has a TV show. Now a TV show is different than something being streamed and something you would have, it's a lot, it takes a, it's a lot harder to get on these network shows than a lot of these, <clears throat> excuse me, these um, streaming services. One, it just is, it's harder to do that. But does that legitimize them? I don't think it should, but it does. It shouldn't legitimize anybody. If you're given that opportunity to, to showcase yourself though, you better be able to maintain that and, and keep that going. So you know, people are going to want to meet you thinking that you're a certain way. You should be that way. Um, we're right. going to be the first team to have a uh, cologne or a bottle of water named after us. Oh, nice. I like that. Nice. But nice. from your perspective, right, it seems to me, and, and I watch a lot of the shows, I freely admit it, right, even the ones I bitch about. Mm -hmm. Why do they only use the same 12 to 15 investigators? They, it, I mean, granted, I'm generalizing, but it, it seems like, it, and no disrespect to anyone in particular, mm -hmm. but Ghost Brothers get 100 shows. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tennessee Wraith Chasers get 100 shows. Jack Osborne gets a hundred shows. Why? Why do they not take a chance on newer people? It's just like Hollywood. It, it is Hollywood. I mean, it, Hollywood doesn't take chance. You know, if people are a successful, uh, if they're successful one time around, let's try it again. The Ghost Brothers. I've I've met two out of three of them. They're awesome. They're great guys. But I gotta um, assume the ratings aren't great because their shows keep getting canceled and then I don't they come know. back with a slightly maybe, different spin and a different Or maybe game. they're maybe they're only limited run anyway. I don't know. To, to be okay. honest, I, I don't I barely watched any shows when I was on. Right. Um I don't watch any of them now. But I, I do know some That's of these fair. people and I see some of the the feedback from people and I see some of the reviews and I see some footage here and there. Um they're doing a show and if they're proven if it's a proven formula they're going to keep taking it and moving it that's like with me with general films i love sequels because if it works the first time don't change it makes it the exact same way just throw a two on it or gotcha. three gotcha it works it's where they hollywood doesn't take chances i mean look they're everything is a reboot a remake a reworking a reimagining whatever yeah, they sure. just don't want and then a lot of these it's sad with a lot of these and people will argue with mine but a lot of these indie films are really good and they're struggling to get out there and get noticed because they don't have the backing of Amazon or Paramount or all these things because the money is not proven. So they want to take a proven product, tweak it the way they can and do that. And then you have these Indian, 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 indie filmmakers that are rife with ideas and just overflowing with, with good original content. And then we have to fight to raise a couple bucks to put our own damn movie. Right. Um, you know, I, um, myself and another you know we we did a um a little indie film or, or really a documentary on the, the conjuring house nice and, plug joe yeah <laughs> no that's cool plug yeah that's right 
Um, I would black out the whole screen and just flash the, the yeah, image hey, of it. Let me go ahead and run that now. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, it got on one streaming server. Well, it was on a couple. But I don't know why they're not on the other ones any, anymore now. But uh, it's like y you see <laughs> – there are other documentaries, I'm not going to name any. There are other documentaries, that, yeah, they're good, but like with ours, and I'm not trying to be biased or anything like that, but it's like, how is it that this person who obviously doesn't know how to run a camera or edit get on <clears throat> something major, whereas myself and, and, and Matt, we don't, like, what's, go what, what's going on here? You know, I mean, connections, right, it's, it's connections. you know, connections. right now it's under review with Discovery Plus. But I, <clears throat> I doubt it'll even go anywhere. Right. Yeah. It's tough. <clears throat> it's tough. And, you know, nowadays, too, everybody with a phone thinks they're a filmmaker. Right. They're not just like the investigators too. anyone with a sure. camera thinks they're a ghost hunter. That's not yeah. the case at all. People don't realize kind of like reviewing evidence where you want to just film everything and then shelve the evidence forever because you don't want to go through it. When you film something, all that stuff, that's when the work begins. That's right. when all the editing begins. That's when all the heartbreak begins and the heartache and the late nights and the lost footage and the corrupted files. And, and people don't want to deal with that. So a lot of indie films don't ever see the light of day. Right. They're, they're promised stuff and you know actors jump on there. They're attached. A lot of them work for exposure, but they don't get exposure because the films never get out. They get shelved or they get forgotten about. Right, gotcha. um, we at least are lucky enough to get ours out there, but you, it's work and people don't want to put the work in. You know, And if, if, if you're already, again, if you're established or if you know somebody, you get to do that much less work because people are more confident in you, so they're going to offer you more, which will be like, I'll edit it. I'll do this and that. I'll do whatever. And it makes it also easier to to get stuff out there. Not everybody, but that def I know that happens. I mean, that's well. Happens. I know. I know. We definitely want to dig into your your film career, but uh, I was I was remiss earlier in your introduction. I forgot one thing. This man is the savior of the VHS. Um, <laughs> he has an amazing collection. He's done a couple documentaries about how that genre is kind of dying out or has died out. But my question is, I've noticed a lot, like in music, a lot of like even new releases and, and of course classic uh, albums. Are starting to get a limited release on vinyl. Do you think in the future? I, I know one of yours is potentially coming out on VHS, but do you think it, it, you know Hollywood wide they will release things on 4K and uh, Blu-ray, and then maybe a limited VHS going forward? Do you think that'll that'll cycle back and they'll start there's, making new VHS players uh, yes, and there, stuff? I do. There's there's limited um, there's limited uh, runs of things now first run there's a lot of films being put out on vhs nowadays but they're limited run they're from smaller companies more more niche um certain areas that to, to hit to put things out uh cool summer my new slasher film which i'm doing a sequel for this summer but um cool summer is coming out on vhs i actually heard from the guy today it looks like it's gonna be mid-summer when it comes out and it'll oh, probably yeah. do a 25 or 50 unit run and that'll last i mean people aren't snatching up the tapes but sure. um the, the thing that with vinyl and, and being a huge VHS enthusiast, nobody, including myself, will tell you that a movie looks better on VHS than it does on any kind of digital or yeah. high definition disc. It, it just doesn't. Right. Um, vinyl, it sounds better. Yeah. People know the sound sounds better. It's deeper. There's more to it. I'm not a vinyl sure. collector. I'm not a vinyl enthusiast, but it sounds better. There's no way it doesn't. And people are missing that. So, yeah, they're going to come back. VHS, it looks better for certain. Like if you watch a copy of Texas Chainsaw Massacre on a washed out, grainy looking VHS tape or Night of the Living Dead, that thing scares the shit out of you to this yeah, it day. Adds to the it adds to the ambiance. It adds to the ambiance when you and some of them were filmed with that in mind. Nowadays, the high, you know, all these things are Blu-ray and high def and 4K. If the original source was not filmed that way, you can't do shit with the movie. So you're just spending more money, and all they're doing is manipulating the colors. Halloween is notorious for looking terrible, uh, having a, a slew of terrible releases over the years because they've been digitally enhanced. The colors are wrong. This and this is not right. The compression is – it doesn't look good. You know, all these films, to me, I would favor any day watching on VHS than whatever because of the ambiance specifically and because a lot of these films lend themselves to playing better. 
but um, they do seem to hold up. They do. Uh, you can drop a VHS tape on the floor. You can brush your finger the wrong way on a Blu-ray and it scratches and it's garbage. So right. they, I do think they're more durable. I think they're more susceptible to, you know, weather problems. You know, if it's very mold, if it's very mildewy, there's an issue with those. But um, other than that, I think they're more durable. I think the artwork is better and the artwork's cooler on these things because um, back then they didn't have, anything online there was no internet there was no way to stream anything promote anything when you would go in the video store the artwork was yeah. what sold the movie Absolutely. so a lot of times it was it was with it was you know misrepresented or whatever but the artwork sold the film and what was also cool back then you know we're talking about how things are how you were bringing up how why your film won't get out there when someone else's will because it's someone you know the level the, the playing field was leveled there because you had somebody that would have you know, a thousand dollar movie or a million dollar movie, both on the same sleeves right next to each other on the shelves. It was yeah. an even playing field. And some of the ones even opted for these big boxes, uh, which are you know, two or three size times the size of regular VHS, because it would take it would occupy more space and would, you know, grab your attention more. Sure. So there's so much history and so much rich history behind these VHS tapes. When you get a rental tape and it's got a you know, a mom and pop store with a phone number on it and rewind 50 cents and all that. And there's, there's dirt on the tape. That is fucking history. You can picture someone popping that tape in on Friday night with their friends sitting around eating thing, of, you know, greasy popcorn and nasty pizza and all this and that. But that was history. There's yeah. no history for that stuff nowadays. So that's, right. you know, even with the new releases on VHS, there's no real nostalgic feel. It's It's a little retro, but there's no nostalgic feel to it and other than having something on vhs just to have it there's no point in putting a new movie on vhs unless you're gonna degrade it or do whatever because it just doesn't really lend itself for any reason other than putting it on your shelf or vhs now i collect a lot of new vhs but <clears throat> there's a big difference in that and sure. that's why i think I, I i think the video stores will come back i'm telling kim i keep telling her i want to buy one and you should start a video store she thinks i'm out of my mind of course no, but, um, I think you're on to something. I got 3,000 tapes here. I mean, that's that's a lot. <laughs> that, and that's, I, that's blockbuster worthy. 29 VCRs and two wow. two Betamaxes, a CD player, a Laserdisc player, tons of stuff. Okay. But um, okay, history you know, question I, for I, you. I just you know I, I do think video stores will come back. I think they will uh, come back. Maybe in a there's a, there were a few out there that early on were starting to offer streaming services there, and it was almost like a almost like one of those internet cafe type things, but it was a video store. I think it, they will come back. A lot of them seem to be evolving into tanning salons for some freaking reason and a tape yeah. thing. But I do think they will come back. They will just come back a little tweak. But you mark my words, 10 years from now, the video stores will be back. So here's a here's a history question for you since you're such an authority and you brought it up. You mentioned Betamax. Mm -hmm. I remember Betamax and VHS from back in the day, and mm -hmm. I was always told the reason Betamax died out in VHS one was that actually Betamax probably was actually a better quality product, mm -hmm. but VHS had better advertising. Is that true? I was told it was the porn industry. It's it's actually the porn it's the porn industry. No it, shit. It was, okay. Yeah, it was um there was a that was a huge, understandably a huge market back then. And there were just many more titles available. Um, Beta. The problem also was that Beta Max had, uh, when it came out, they they also came out first, but they had like a one hour tape. When VHS came out. They came out with the two hour, or the six. You know, they, yeah. and it was enough to have one movie on one tape. So gotcha. the technology got a little cheaper. And then kind of like HD DVD and Blu-ray when they came out, which also HD DVD, in my opinion, is a, is a superior format to Blu-ray. But that's a whole different thing. But the company started jumping ship and going to Blu-ray for whatever reason, and that kind of killed the thing. So that's the same thing Betamax, coupled with the fact that um, more titles of that particular genre were available. The tapes were cheaper. You were able to fit a full film on a player. They were just more available. They were just more readily available. The only thing that, that I have both. I mean, I have. Yeah. I only have about two or three dozen Betamax tapes, but yeah, um, the, the other thing that have. really hurt was the fact that VCR could record. Mm -hmm. And Betamax Betamax not. they some of the later ones could they there was a Betamax oh, uh, there no. was a B1 a B2 and a B3 speed B1 I don't believe I could be wrong but I don't think B1 could or didn't it was very expensive it was like cost prohibitive for that 
but they started being able to do that. It was time shifting. That's what it was called because you could be able to take a TV show that was on at eight o'clock, record it, play it back after work at midnight, and yeah. you were time shifting. And the Betamax actually was were able to record, so they actually introduced that concept to people, which people liked, which helped Betamax early on. But the fact that VHS kind of sat back and perfected all that stuff yeah. kind of stole their thunder. I'm just the guy so, sitting what, here waiting for laser discs to come back because nothing like taking a CD the size of an album and putting them in to watch. Right. I mean that that was my that was my thing. Yeah, yeah, I have some. I one of my friends collects them. He's got like hundreds. I have probably fifty, and I also have like fifty, maybe fifty CEDs, which were kind of like a, oh, a ghetto yeah, version those. of laser discs. They yeah, were like yeah. they had the thing that you'd push in and pull it out, and it would you know put the disc in there. It looked yep. like a, a vinyl record. Right. inside yep. um but you would go in there and flip it and take it back and you never touch a disc but you put it in yeah. the sleeve and it was but i have a working cd player which is insane we my, my wife is a real estate photographer and we went to uh we went to have a collecting these discs for some reason these ced discs never had a player can't find one and um we went to uh do a photo shoot we're there the whole house is empty there's a freaking ced player right on the uh the fireplace no so kidding. i'm like uh that you need to call your 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 you know contact so she called the lady that hired her and she's like yeah there's a ced player on a or she's like there's like a vcr thing on the fireplace my husband really wants it he'll buy it from you know he's like oh that piece of shit just take it <laughs> so wow. i got that and it works now and it's it was not wow. easy to find and i actually had a library of them already so it's perfect nice <laughs> oh so, being that you have all those formats, Betamax, VHS, um, which format do you think was best for porn? Did they go the right direction? Uh, oh, you heard the question. Um, <laughs> you I think it. VHS Hello? was just the. I think VHS was just the best for everything. Yeah. I, I do think Betamax. I don't. You know, you have these enthusiasts, and one of my good friends who runs the Betamax is better. He and I will fight all the time. Like he's like seventy year old guy, but he's feisty. He's awesome. And we'll fight all the time. I met him for my documentary. I went to meet him uh, in or in uh, Ohio. I stayed with him. I actually spoke to him today. Um, but he swears by Betamax. And, you know, there's a lot of enthusiasts out there that will swear up and down that they look better. They look marginally better. I don't think they look much better. But the, the players are harder to get. So there's more mystique behind them, which is kind of cool. It's, it's cooler to find a Betamax player and a Betamax tape than VHS, which is much more, you know, uh, prominent right now, but even those are getting hard to find now. Yeah, you got to remember VHS not only porn, but Disney threw its lot behind VHS. Oh. So, yeah, all of Gary's favorite Disney princesses were on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess we should uh, talk about what he has going on now. Yeah, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about it because uh, I, I had the honor of being a small part of Cruel Summer One. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the the honor of having someone's head smashed in on my uh, missing in action poster, right. and I still have it up here on my wall with nice. the blood all well, over it. We so. can't see it. Well, you're not going to, but that's yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I know you got you're in the early stages of uh, financing Cruel Summer Two. Talk to us about that. Yeah, actually, um, so again with with indie films, it's, it's usually there's a delay with stuff. So the print for VH uh, for Cruel Summer is already up to the uh, distributors he already told me it's probably gonna be till the fall not until the fall until it comes out just because there's such a backlog everything he's dealing with a lot and then he's got to send it to the streaming services and the streaming services most likely what they do is they get packages because it's tough to sell one of your own films so what they'll do is they'll probably package it with uh, i don't want to say a more desirable title but that's exactly what it is more of a name product or whatever and they'll put it with five or six other films. And they'll say, do you want to buy this package? Do you want to buy this package? So it's a whole process to get it done. Um, he did say it's going to be a big streaming uh, deal for this. It's going to go all over except for iTunes for some reason. I think they have different benchmarks or whatever Fucking to get Apple, it through. Man. Fucking <clears throat> but, but it's going to be all over. So, But that's not going to be for a while. Okay. We have the VHS release of that coming out in early to mid-summer, I was told, which is cool. Good time for cool summer. That'd be yeah. great. Absolutely. Um, and then I'm going to start getting uh, DVDs and Blu-rays out. We're going to self-distribute those. I'm going to get a site up, get them going, have a little bit of different content on each one to entice people to buy both. All right. Hey, this is capitalism. Got to do that. Sure. Um, but 
when you a lot of these companies too, even if you get a good deal, the the distributors take seventy eighty percent of the sales. It's like I'm I understand that, and they they do some work. I get it, but I'm not giving you eighty percent of my movie. I, it's my movie. Right. I can't do that. And if I have um, financiers and backers, if people are investing in our film, I got to get think about paying them back and getting their money back. So that's my number one priority. So that's why we're sure. trying to sidestep a lot of that. Um, get a big streaming deal, which should be pretty good, but put out our own DVDs. So basically for the cost of DVDs, there's no overhead just for the cost. And then everything else is, is profit. So that's, um, that's all happening now. That's what I'm currently working on. Cool summer Two just actually finished financing. What we're doing is, um, I have a couple of private again, financiers on that. We just raised, uh, I want to raise 500 bucks. We we're hitting 1500 right now. Nice. Um, just on DVD sales, on Blu-ray sales for the new one. Um, I wanted to get this on the heels of the first one, which is cool because it looks like the first one's going to come out and then the second one may follow very quick after it. Um, I already had a second one planned for when I wrote the first one. So um, it's not like an afterthought. It's, this is already a natural progression that I have. Um, and it's already cast. We're, we're looking for like eight other people, I think. But the entire cast from the first one is coming back. Even if they died, they're coming back. Nice. I got. I, I know yes. what I'm doing here. So, um, and I love sequels. So I want to make this a kick-ass sequel. It's called sequel. It's called sequel, and it plays into the script for a reason. Sequel, cool summer part two. Okay. Um, so we're filming in June. Uh, we're filming in uh, Newport Ritchie and Tallahassee, where I am. Okay. Um, we got this badass antique theater that we had to get uh, insurance coverage for. Because the thing is over 100 years old and it's it's massive and sprawling, it's really going to help our production values, which is great. Um, but I have I'm still have that campaign up on Indiegogo, and it's in demand status now because it, it hit and exceeded its goal. So now it's basically going to go until I stop it. And we already sold two or three hundred dollars more worth of stuff since it's closed, which has been great. But I think as of right now, I have three Blu-rays and five DVDs left. And everyone that's listening, if anyone's listening, pay attention because if you guys are interested in that, it's uh, DVD or Blu-ray. It's signed by cast and crew. It's and this is the only time to get these. Signed by cast and crew, and you get your name and IMDb credits as well as the scrolling credits in the film. Twenty bucks for Blu-ray or for a DVD. Twenty-five for a Blu-ray. It can't yeah, get better that. than that. That's really good. And there's three and five left. Literally, that's all that's left. So. Um, when those are gone, those are gone. We will have the general release down the line. But as you guys are seeing, we filmed Cool Summer back in uh, it was a while back now, like February. Yeah. And uh, it's still not or last February, you know, not, you know, whatever. And it's still not out yet because it just takes that long. So if anyone really wants to see this film, you're going to have to wait a year or you can have to pick up a disc now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's just what I, it is. I I did that for the first one. I, <clears throat> I helped you know get, get get a copy of that. So I've seen it, and I saw. I know I've seen it way earlier than everyone else. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a, a a really cool inadvertent perk, I guess. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, because you don't want to, especially if you've seen the first one, and you're a fan. You don't want to wait another year to see right. it. You know, you want to get it as soon as you can. So. And it's a fun movie. Is it is it going to win any awards? No, but it's not supposed to. It's 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 lowbrow. It's a typical eighty slasher. It's uh, 17 kills in 78 minutes. It's all practical effects. And we got one of the guys that worked on this effects for Zombie Land Double Tap to oh, come in and do our effects. So well, it's pretty badass. But, so the nice thing is, not winning any awards, you're in no danger of having Will Smith smack the shit out of you. Not at all. Not at all. There Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. Like he's any, you know, the, the only, the only, the only bad publicity is no publicity. You're not wrong so, there. Bring it up. And then, oh, I will bring this up, too. This is probably the only place I'm going to say this. I think this is you guys have a, uh, Ooh, an exclusive, exclusive scoop All right. here. Yeah. But um, there's plan. And this is I'm, I'm already planning it a couple years down because after Cool Summer 2, Jim and I are working. We're switching gears completely. My, my business partner, Jim O'Rear, we're switching gears completely. And we're doing a, a dramedy, a comedy drama. It's going to be a complete Ooh. departure from us. It's going yeah. to be either a, a great film or a beautiful failure. Either way, it's going to be a big <laughs> change of pace for us. But after that, which is second film, so probably two years down the line, I'm planning on Cool Summer 3. Oh, the nice. final, it's already here. I have a treatment in the computer. I just have to flesh it out now, but I've already spoken to some of the cast that I need. They're all on board. Uh, that's what we just need huh? to get financed for that and get it done. So that'll be yeah. my trilogy, and, you know. 
Well, I should Happy be a uh, fairly financial solvent by then once I retire. So uh, <laughs> right. I got you, brother. We're good. <laughs> We're good. And congratulations, man, on that. And you should be uh, really proud about that. You did a good job with that. Oh, proud thanks, man. Appreciate Very it, cool. Appreciate I'm glad it. I was I was able to watch it. I just couldn't, unfortunately, get there. But uh, yeah, I was in no, spirit. Yeah, I understand. So. No, and, and this, this guy over here to my side, uh, he's he's the thank for all the uh, audio video on that. Otherwise, Very it cool. would have been my mom holding a cell phone and that would have just looked like <laughs> shit. That would have so. still worked, though, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Momo vision. That works. Momo vision. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is she on here tonight? I haven't seen her pop uh, up. She yet. said she was, but, you know, she's old, so yeah, we're, probably we're, forgot. We're up against quite a few live streamers. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that. Goddamn so. YouTubers. <laughs> oh, man. But also, Just, they know that I'm on, so they stay away in droves. They're like, oh, that guy. <sighs> yeah, I bet we'll probably do our biggest numbers ever. I'm looking for at least a solid, like, four five. or five. Yeah. <laughs> it's, always, it's always after the live. It's right. When- People yeah, it's like, always the replay. No one wants right? to show up live. Sometimes right. even the guest doesn't want to show up live. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know what? Anytime I've uh, tried to do interviews with StreamYard, it's been a no-go. And wow. I've been trying to do Jason uh, Jason Schneider's, who's been instrumental and in also helping with the films. He's been amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be helping film part two, and he has a big role in part two as well, Cool Summer. Okay. But um. I couldn't get I couldn't get on show. Audio was blocked. Video was blocked. I tried everything. I didn't know what it was when I was up there in uh, past October because I was up there for uh, what was it? That scarefest or scarefest, and then that one before <laughs> DeadCon mm. the week before. Yeah. I just bummed around. I stayed with him for a couple of days, and I stayed with Paul Bradford for a couple of days. They were all great and gracious. But um, at that time, I showed Jason. I'm like, the fuck is wrong with this phone? <laughs> So he fixed it, and I didn't use it since, and that's why I was telling you. I'm like, oh, I know I have problems streamyard, so let's get on there a little early and see. But yeah, he fixed everything. So Sweet. this is well, we're first glad one we're I worked with streamyard. Yeah. yeah. So so I'm gonna hit you with the outside the box question. I know we've asked you this before, mm-hmm. but we have a lot of new viewers, like six or seven of them. So <laughs> Hi. Um, if they make a a movie, Hollywood makes a movie about the life and times of Scott Tepperman. Two part question: Who plays you, and who plays Joe Chin? Joe Chin can go anywhere and be recognized, so I think it would be it would it would behoove Hollywood to just cast Joe Chin. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, like a, doesn't he have a brother that looks like a, a lot like him? He, he does. Willing, so maybe Wellington. his brother then. It's Wellington. Wellington, Wellington okay. Chin. But let's I'll do, tell you guys do. one thing real quick. We went to I think we were in Peru. We were walking around it. I, I'm not. I don't want to offend anybody, but it looked like we were maybe Peru. I don't know or Belize, but. The people looked like they lived in mud huts. They were like yeah. in the middle of nowhere, and we were walking. And people come up like, Joe Chin! It's like, how the fuck does that man know who Joe is? <laughs> Wherever we go, they didn't look like they had running water, electricity, how did he, but they knew who Joe was. How do these was. cannibals know who he is? Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, I, to be honest, I, when I had a little weight loss, a little bit, mm-hmm. oh, he's gaining a little weight now, so I guess it'll work. But I had my hair, my, my beard a little thicker. Um, a lot of people said Joey Fatone looked similar. Ooh. ooh so maybe it would be... Joey Fat One, yeah, yeah, I could yeah. see that. I could see that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you know, he wants to be part of the Impractical Jokers crew now that the oh, does he? I left. He's yeah, cool. he's got a good personality. He's I can see a... him doing that. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see Joey Fatone playing you. What oh. do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, he would want to sing and dance more than you'd want him to. But well, well, I don't I, know. You, I you've never karaoke. seen. Yeah, so you've never seen Scott karaoke. It's, it's a thing of brilliance. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's a thing, all right. You also never seen him make fun of our, a mutual friend of ours in, in a bathroom in a pizza place in Tampa, Florida, either. But, right, right, yeah. right. My God, that was so funny. <laughs> that was funny. Go ahead and tell that story. I'm sure our viewers it, would love that. This one. was a very busy pizza place in Tampa, and <clears throat> um, you know, the typical New York snob of pizza. I'm like, yeah, this is just no. This is not. This is not. This is place is awesome. I forgot the name of the place, but they have really good pizza, but they're very crowded. We were in there, and I don't remember remember exactly what happened, but Tim Miley, everywhere he goes, he's got to go to the bathroom, and everyone in the world has to know about it. For some That's reason, true. feels he's very the need to it. discuss his, his you know inner workings with everybody. So he goes to the restroom, and uh, he 
I don't know, he's cranking one out, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and I don't know exactly. I may have forgotten exactly, but I, I know it was the sound of like a dinosaur or whatever that I made. Yes. And, like, and I like open the door on him <laughs> while he's sitting there and it, it opens right up into the, there's no hallway to the bathroom. Nope, it's like, this, nope. is the, this is the dining room. This is the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> so it opened up and he's sitting in Owens Clark. Yeah, he screamed like he was a velociraptor he, it was and him good about stuff. shit his pants. It was good stuff. Uh, it was good stuff. <laughs> you can imagine that he doesn't want to have this as a friend now. <laughs> no, I don't know. Nah, I can't imagine. It's such a charming uh, situation. <laughs> well, you know, Scotty, we're running a little bit low on time tonight, so I want to give you an opportunity to get all of your uh, your uh, promotions and, and contact points out there for folks. Um, so the floor is yours, my friend. Guys, again, thank you for having me on. You guys are awesome. Uh, it's an honor to be on with all you guys. And again, Gary, congratulations again. Well deserved, and uh, enjoy your retirement. You try. young, you young bastard. <laughs> 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 um, but, oh shit! Oh, oh, hey, oh, hey, hey, yeah, hey! hey. The phone now. That was okay, it. there we go. It got crazy. I broke the phone. Holy moly! Okay. That's what anyway, yeah. You guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're good. Okay. See, I got all excited. Wrecked the joint. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, look for Cruel Summer. It's going to be coming out. Uh, if you find me on Facebook, it's Facebook Scott GHI. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Twitter Scott GHI. I'm on TikTok, but I don't use this shit because it's stupid. But I am on there. <laughs> Maybe if more people go yes, on there, it'll be yes, make yes. me worth doing something. I don't know. Yes, can, t- yes. my, my wife's telling me I should do uh, Instagram. I may. I don't know. But there's a Cruel Summer page, a sequel Cruel Summer Part 2 page on Facebook, as well as Cruel Summer 1. Um, but if you're interested at all, hit me up on Facebook. Um, and I like to get people on there, not just to have numbers, but I actually interact with people on my page. I, I invite conversations, messages, whatever. Um, I don't usually like evidence sent to me. I still get that. But, you know, my thing is if, if I'm never there, I don't know how, what kind of control elements were used or whatever. So sure. I, I pretty much always discount everything I get. So don't waste your time with that. But if you guys have messages or just comments or general whatever, hit me on Facebook. Keep you know, keep in contact there. And uh, I'm also doing a small casting call for Cool Summer Part Two. There's no experience necessary. You just have to have good work ethic and not be a dickhead. Um, well, that's because there's no, out, then. It, I'm out. Yeah, you're out, Gary. So, but there's there's <laughs> just no room for all that stuff. You know, we don't have time or energy sure. or, or whatever for that. So. Right. Uh, but yeah, if you want to just be a part of a, of a cool, fun uh, set, come on, uh, come to join us and, and get on board with us. Um, hit me up there. Um, we have a film that just came out about a year or so ago called Hell's Bells. It's a horror comedy uh, that's available all over online. Um, just check the years because sometimes there's there's old films the same name. So our Hell's Bells is like I think it's 2021 or 2020. <laughs> Um, that's out why the, there. Why know? the fuck is Bruce Willis in this movie? I don't remember right, exactly. You don't want to get there's one that's like the House Bells, the danger of rock music, which is kind of sim- <laughs> similar. Sure, that's very doing. similar, actually. But there's like it's like a Christian propaganda film or something. So you know, oh, stay yeah, away from that, that one. one. We're yeah, not no, doing no, that. No, no. Um, but uh, yeah, just stay in touch. There's a lot of stuff going on. Always things happening, and uh, I love to to contact with as, as many people as I can. Just you know, reach out. Sounds good, brother. Thank yeah. you for your time, man. Yeah. Oh, I will be. Oh, I'll tell you guys. So I will be at the. Um, we're doing a show, uh, Horrorville, in July. It's a one-day pop-up show. I did the the full convention back in January. It was mm-hmm. cool. It was a cool uh, time. We had a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be in Cocoa, Florida. I didn't know where that was, but I think it's like Cocoa Beach or whatever. But going to be doing one in July, um, okay. July seventeenth. I think going to be there. And then I'm doing one called the Upstate Spirit Conference. Keith Age is going to be there. I think it's in oh shit I'm in South Carolina or North Carolina. It sounds fun. They're getting good speakers. It sounds like it's going to be a, a good investigation, a lot of fun. And uh, I like doing these things. You know, I just again when when you're off TV for a while, people don't even. It's like you don't exist. And I'm still here, and I'm, I'm I, I'm actually debating somewhat getting back into stuff. I just have to see Ooh. if the interest is there. So you know, you're going to be the fourth ghost brother. Is yeah, that what yeah. You're telling me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, it, it's just it's if the people want, you know, people always like Scott, you should go to this show. I'm like, recommend me. That, that people aren't just gonna pull my name out of their ass, you know. Right. Literally, you got to say, hey, what about so and so? What about so and so? Then it looks like there's a demand, and then it'll bring people out. So, um, if you want to see me, spread the word. I'll, yeah, I'll be there. And uh, well, this season they've been know. pulling a lot of the people back on Ghost Hunter, so mm-hmm. I was kind of thinking maybe they'd 
swing you back through on an episode. They, they're, they're, first of all, really, they're really cool guys. So I'm glad that they're getting another shot at this. They deserve it. But um, GHI and Ghost Hunters has always been so separate. I mean, as far as I know, sci-fi, I, I, when I was talking to Jason in, um, it's, it was a Scarefist or Deadcon. It was Deadcon in October. Um, he was saying he, you know, he still owns a piece of GHI and all that, which makes sense. But um, there's very, they're very different, pardon the pun, but they're very different entities. I think pretty much sci-fi, if I, I could be wrong, but I think sci-fi owned the Ghost Hunters name. And I think they could basically take whatever show they want and throw Ghost Hunters on it. Like Ghost Hunters Academy, I know they had that Stephen Tango connection yeah. on there, but I, I don't think there was much of a, there wasn't really much connecting those shows other than the title. Well, you know, we I think they could do a complete cast change up on that name. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. Right. And then I think what happened is I think they maybe lost the name or didn't want to secure the name. So A and E got it and had that weird one off season with Grant, um, with Grant yeah. which was which was cool. Grant's a great guy. But uh, and those those guys, I don't really know those guys at all. I can't judge them at all. But I don't think they were given a fair shot. I think they they were the enthusiasm is what I would as a producer want to see. They were From very my, my perspective, the reason it went the way it did in the mm -hmm. South as quick as it did mm -hmm. was I think a lot of people felt like they were sold a bill of goods. They were mm -hmm. sold that, yeah, it was a bunch of new people or, you know, relatively new people and Grant. The problem is every episode Grant was in it less right. and less right. and less. Then he wasn't showing up. Then he's just, you know, calling in through a Zoom and people are like, hey, wait a minute. You know, right. this is not what we signed up for. Had right. they and, not and done that, I think right. it would have gone Maybe. And, and to be honest, so maybe these, these, these newer folks were – if it was called something else, sure. maybe the expectations would have been more in check. That, yeah, that might have been the plan the whole time. Right, was because get him from, out there and then slowly right. back him away. Because what because what I've seen is that they they did they seem very enthusiastic. They seem very personable. I didn't like I said I don't, I've never met any of them. They just seem to be cool people. But I just think they were received very uh, apprehensively just for the reason you brought up. And yeah, I, I don't think that was fair. Uh, the originals and they're not right. Like, and, and, and it ghost, wasn't, I mean, if you look at that, that it wasn't ghost hunters. I, I watched one episode and I'm like, this has a little twist to it, but this yeah. doesn't feel like ghost hunters. It didn't it help didn't. that ghost nation fired up at the same time, which basically right. had everybody from ghost hunters or at least yeah. the very memorable. Folk. Well, that, and it was a similar thing. I'll tell you guys this real quick, but there was a show. I forgot the name of it because it literally lasted like one episode, but very soon after Ghost Hunters International was canceled, they got this new show, and it was a bunch of young kids, I want to say, younger people, but going international and investigating. And the main the main blowback that I heard was everybody was like, so this is GHI with unknown younger people. Who are these people? Bring back GHI. Where's GHI? And that kind of hit that show. And that show was done dead in the water for the same reason. So yeah. you, you, it's it's tough to do that. If if you have an established brand, you gotta deliver just enough to not stray too much from the formula that has already been established for that particular universe. And it's tough to do. But um, I have I think an idea. Ghost for Hunters a show. found the name found back where well, it, it's back where it should be now. So. Somebody will steal that idea. No, 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 no. I've already got it copyrighted. The four of us doing haunted strip clubs all over the nation. <laughs> <laughs> No. Nice. That, during business work. hours during business okay. hours yes. so call it yes. ghost string g string oh yes g string, g -string. paranormal always thinking oh i can't say that go. actually ed mcgrowski um, has that one I think. no we, we can uh, launch the show in tampa there's quite a few places there in tampa. <laughs> we could do seven Allegedly, seasons in tampa uh, <laughs> um the other thing too though with um <clears throat> the other cast for um ghost hunters was there was i like the guys um I don't know them personally, but I know who they are. But there was a lot of smack talk about another television show uh, amongst a couple of them. And it's kind of like, this isn't helping. <laughs> um, oh, they were talking about other like, shows? Yeah, when you're yeah. new, you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. Oh, when, when you're when you're the new? With the, with the new one? Yeah, yeah talking about um, established oh, shows, maybe, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you can't um, come out. Let's, let's not do the drama on here. We'll save that for next week. That's a, you know, yeah. hum humility goes very far yeah. with with um with everything. You, you sure. should just be like that. You, no one is higher than other people. You're not. Right. Um, and if you if you think you are, it's certainly not because of your perceived. You know, I'm higher up because I'm on a show. There's nothing like right. that. If you're an a hole and you're with someone that's not an a hole, yeah, you're you're a better person than that person. Sure. But you don't walk around with that air of, you know, uh, 
pomposity of value. You just it's 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 unbecoming. And I have not heard out, anything about that, but just that's not a good idea. And it's no, not that, and not them. But if you're handing out eight by tens and a picture on it's from you for like 25 years ago, that's probably not a good <laughs> that's, thing. You that's one of the things. The best. When I wanted to do, I want always wanted to do convention circuit. I love that. I've been doing yeah. conventions since 2008, before I was even on uh, Ghost Hunters. I was doing my local team and doing whatever, mm-hmm. and just getting myself into these shows based on my interactions with show promoters. I would say, hey, I'm so and so. If you want someone that's just knowledgeable, that's good with people, that's whatever. And I got in based on that. You know, I just I had nothing really to, I want to say to offer anybody, but no real tangible name to sell. I was just like, give me a shot. Just bring me in for a table. That's all I need. Um, and I decided back then, I said, I didn't, I, and I've seen a lot of these stars. Now, it's cool to be associated with like, if you're in Text Chainsaw Massacre, you should just, that's a mic drop. You don't have to be, do ever anything again. That's awesome. If you're in Halloween, right. same thing. But at the same time, if it's not one of those, and if it's some other thing that's lesser impactful on society, Jeepers, creepers, you, don't, you just don't want to make that one picture. You don't want to be standing in front of that banner of you 30 years ago as your only footnote to your biography. Right. You just don't want to do that. So yeah. I keep moving ahead. I, Ghost Hunters was huge, and, and I'm proud of it, but I, I want to do a lot more than that. Have I attained anything higher than that? Obviously, no. I'm trying. Uh, and we're making some good strides. It takes a little while. It's tough to make that balance between ghost hunters and, you know, indie film or at least another attempt at ghost stuff. Uh, but, you know, stick with it and try to do what you can. And at least you're bringing other stuff out there. You're putting product out there. You're not cruising on. I was on Ghost Hunters, uh, Ghost Hunters International. Hey, you know, bow down to me. Because people aren't going to do that. They're just not going to. Yeah, if your yeah. show has been on for 15 years straight, then yeah, that's your claim to fame. And you can stand in front of that banner. But mm-hmm. like Gary was saying, if you're walking around with white or gray hair and your portfolio picture is jet black hair from when you're 30 years younger, yeah. it might be time to update that Well, picture. yeah. If you're looking at a banner, if you look at these conventions, and sometimes people stand in front of the banner, you're like, who the fuck is that guy? Was that you? Yeah. Now it's cool to have that on there, but have right. some updated things of you and other things yeah, because yeah. it's to me. I mean, some people may be fine with that. It, I wouldn't be. I just gotcha. wouldn't be with that. Yeah. Well, Scotty, I know you got to take off tonight, but man, we're so grateful for your time. It's and, been an uh, honor, guys. Thank you so much. I'm glad this worked because I was worried about the stream. <laughs> <things. So. laughs> we're looking forward to catching up down the road after Cruel Summer Two hits before maybe Cruel Summer Three. And, that's uh, way down the line, but that's not. Well, a couple of years now. Oh, we have that many guests lined up, so it's going to be a while before we fit you in the rotation. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, God bless you, buddy, and be well, and we'll talk soon offline. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. <laughs> what the heck is that? Applause, buddy. <laughs> Who got applause? <laughs> we never Scott, get applause. Scott got applause. Is this like a live studio audience thing? Holy yes. shit. <laughs> hey, this... Gary, your mom dropped in here in the last hey, second. Yay, hey, yay, an hour late. Awesome, yay. Yeah. Hey, mom. Catch the replay. Yep. All, <laughs> All right. right. I got nothing else. Next week is uh, Denise Smith with the uh, Cryptic Par- or Cryptid Paranormal Show. All right. Hey, yeah. And then uh, we're working on Phoenix MUFON. And uh, a, a very big Paris celebrity. We'll leave it at that. Oh. And no, it's not Zach Bagans or Smax Mosborn. Hmm. Hmm. All right. <laughs> all right, fellas. I'm going to end it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Appreciate all, what, two of you guys? <laughs> whoa, whoa. Don't make us send Will Smith out there. We are uh, we weren't even getting any action in the comment section tonight, at least not yeah. on this handle. Well, no. you know, we, we we may have scared a lot of people away with the uh, the uh, trendy show we did last week. So, yeah, uh, cool. we are up against other uh, fucking YouTubers, YouTubers man. <laughs> what are we up against? Yeah, what are we? Uh, Zach Bagans doing a YouTube podcast tonight. <laughs> what no. are we up against? No, no, just other bigger YouTubers. That's all. Whoa, whoa. Well, well that's I'm pretty all round, the time, bro. Ain't it? There's not a lot. I, mean, I don't, than I don't me. think there's just pockets of YouTube. I think that's constantly, ain't it? I had a pocket of YouTube, on YouTube once, but then I got an antibiotic. Yes. No, we, we usually do pretty well. So just not tonight. <laughs> just on the replays, baby. Hey, just dude. on the replay. Holy YouTube. shit. I bet those YouTubers ain't doing that live. Dominoes and biscuits. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to end it, guys. <laughs> hey, why don't you end it? Not your life, just the show. The but show. if you do, come back as a special guest. Yes. 